thought carries with it an interesting speculation. Hermes pointed out that images erected to sanctified persons or to deities may have power to heal the sick. In what degree does this essentially differ from the modern concept of images in many departments and divisions of the Christian Church? Hermes does not tell us that these images are gods, nor that they are false gods, nor that they should be worshipped as equivalent to or equal to gods. Hermes tells us that these images are symbols, emblems, figures, bearing witness to man's veneration of invisible powers, proximate statues in honor of remote principles. If, therefore, an individual shall create an image with the full realization that this image is a shadow of a principle and shall worship this image not for itself but as a means of focusing his attentions or his devotions upon something substantially unseen and invisible. He shall not be regarded as an idolater. He shall not be regarded as a worshiper of idols unless he bestows the spiritual power upon the idol itself, unless he regards the creature of marble, stone, or wood as having a sanctity in its own nature. If, however, he shall use this as he uses religious art to remind him of the existence of a spiritual power, and shall fully recognize that the image is not that power, but only represents it under certain conditions, and that all prayers addressed to the image are addressed actually to the power and not to the statue. Under such conditions there shall not be heresy. This is more or less accepted today, and the intercession of saints and the uh, presentation of petition to canonized persons or to representations of Christ, or the Virgin Mary, or the Apostles, shall not be regarded as the worship of images, but shall be regarded as internal reminders by which man receives an impulse to the fulsomeness of veneration, and shall therefore worship in spirit and in truth using this symbol only as a means of centering his attention upon something which is otherwise beyond the cognition of his senses. Hermes clearly makes this point, and we can scarcely deny that it has survived to us. <laughs> However, in the course of time, a point also made by Hermes came into general uh, disrepute and uh, was conveniently forgotten. This point is to the effect that such images as are made under certain conditions have magical qualities peculiar to themselves. These magical qualities not being spiritual or religious, but pertaining to sciences as yet but remotely uh, sensed and practically without our general recognition. Thus, according to Hermes, if into a figure or into a symbol there shall be incorporated certain principles of mathematics, of universal procedure, of cosmogony, of art, of musical harmony, of artistic canon, if, in other words, this image shall be made a resplendent geometrical or artistic composition, so essentially proportioned, so beautiful in its parts, so benevolent in its complexion, that it shall cause the admiration of men, then this, in, this image is not dead, for it may lead men to repentance. It may cause evil persons 
to ask forgiveness. It may console the afflicted and the burdened, and it may also inspire the studious to examine its proportions in search for universal truths concealed behind the actual structure and form themselves. I say strikes at the very roots of religion. Well, of course, Mr. Beamish says miracles and miracles. Exactly, Miss Membridge. Now, uh, we, we, we must make it clear what a miracle is, see? Some people would argue that the sun rising every day is a miracle. Well, some of us do. Mm, not what I call a miracle. A miracle, I say, is something contrary-wise to the usual course of nature done by an act of will. Something that couldn't happen not without being specially willed. So you say. Well, you've got to have a definition. Mm -hmm. What do you say, sir? Well... Oh, Mr. Cox? Oh, I'm not in this. Mm. Well, I agree. Something contrary-wise to the usual course of nature. Have it so. What about it? All right. Now, for instance, take, um... What? That lamp. That lamp in the natural course of nature couldn't burn Upside down, could it? You say it couldn't. Well, then you. You aren't going to say it could, are you? Well, then it couldn't. All right. Then well, then now. Yeah. Now, if someone comes along, see, mm -hmm. as, as it might be me, and uh, stands as, as it might be here, see, and says to that lamp, as I might do, collecting all my willpower, and I'm doing it, Mark. I'm, I'm playing fair. Says, here you. Turn upside down without breaking and go on burning steady. What the hell? Not possible. I can't keep it up any longer. It's got the drop! Now, Mr. Fotheringay, will you be good enough to explain this silly trick before I come and chuck it out? Whatever makes what, it do. Why, don't Bobby Winch? It'll never do. Here. Go back. Oh. oh. Leave him alone. Let that rose tree vanish. Hello, mister. What's the game? What's all this throwing about the brambles? I wasn't throwing any brambles at you, Mr. Winch. I was just doing what you call working a miracle. Oh, it's you, Mr. Miracle Worker. It's you, is it? This is how you spend your nights. This is how you do it, eh? Well, this time you've done one trick too many. Well, you're not going to take it seriously, Mr. Winch, are you? It isn't me that takes it seriously, it's the law. What, run me in? Me so respectable? Oh, you can't do it, Mr. Winch. I'm doing it now. Come on. No, I won't. You're coming. Oh, go to blazes. Golly, he's gone to... Where am I? He's got me into some sort of pitfall or something. He's full of them there tricks. Party here too. I better make a note of this. An officer should always make a careful note. What was the exact time? Why oh, the paper's going round? It's on all the boats too. Oh dear, what is this? It can't be a nice place to go to. Can't send a chap to like that. Where's my stick? Out? Oh, here. Yeah. Let my stick be back. Not broken. What am I to do about Mr. Winch? What am I to do about Mr. Winch? I, I can't leave him there. I, I, I'll bring him back. I, oh, I know. <laughs> San Francisco. That's for nearly halfway around the world. <laughs> Let Mr. Winch, wherever he is, go immediately to San Francisco. 